This is the, the individual um, waterfall document that we've been using, which just shares exactly this perspective that um, with careful planning and instruction, students can be successful. What we're doing here is giving information that lines up for each individual student with the areas of processing that could be impacted in the classroom and suggestions for what it looks like in the classroom, um, instructional strategies, environmental strategies, assessment strategies that link in directly to the IEP. But this is something, and assistive technology um, strategies as well. But this is something that can be used not just for students with an IEP, but for all students in the classroom if we're starting to think about how to support them. If it's in user-friendly, understandable language, oh, I have a student in my class who has difficulty, I have to repeat the instructions. What, and I, you know, what does that mean? Well, if you can look here to see, oh, it could be a difficulty with language. Um, these are possible signs of a language difficulty. This could be a, a student who's having uh, difficulty with language. So what are some things that I can just do, just some easy things that can help me um, help that student to understand and be more successful. And if I have access to this in my classroom, which most classrooms do, in either a large chart format or in this individual uh, waterfall chart, then I can, there's got to be more than one student in my class who may have some of that, may have that difficulty. Then I've got just a tip, a, a tool in my toolbox that I can use to help support. It doesn't have to be so, so complicated for all 30, but it is important that the, that the learning profiles of all 30 are understood so that those students can be successful. We got specific feedback from teachers who said, well, it's all fine and dandy for you to show me, sort of similar to your question, fine and dandy for you to show me these processing areas and what they are and what they might look like and things that I can do for them, but I don't assess phonological processing in my classroom. And I don't assess visual perceptual skills. So how does that impact on what I'm teaching? And so that's why we created this section here called How Learning is Affected by Processing Areas. And it goes through each of the areas, reading, writing, math, as we've spoken about, talking and listening, organization skills, social skills, and motor skills. And it shows the, the processing area and what the student may have difficulty with. So it's a direct translation and understanding of what this looks like in the classroom. And just the last piece of this that I would share with you, and I've mentioned it, but I haven't shared it um, visually, is when we do a feedback with students, this is a, um, we go through what we call um, a learning plan or a plan for success. We show the student how, and we have them complete how they learn best, what their strengths are. Um, what they have difficulty with, what their needs are, and what helps them. So this is done with the student, with the parent, with the special education teacher, um, with the people who will help that student to be successful. It's a plan that it's all agreed upon. And so moving forward, it's not an IEP or a document that they may not have access to, although we're working very hard on including students in that process, so they're part of that process of understanding even the documents that they have in their file. But this is the part of the self-advocacy piece, so if they understand who they are, how they learn, they can be empowered to be more successful in the, their own lives, and also so the teachers have that information.